Hello there, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of my new gameplay series for the Primal Necromancers, because they are new at Necromancy got overhauled, and I played enough of the Primals by now that I think I figured out a way that might be awesome Necromancy-wise for them as well, so let's get this party started. We're going to play with Goatkin. Uh, I, I did overwork their base frame by giving them overwhelm tactics and elusive traits so they get hurt less by retaliation blows and they gain a crit chance when they stand next to each other. I really find that a pretty pretty useful thing. We are starting as mana, mana channelers because I really like to have less costs on summoning spells with this faction and powerful evokers because this gives us a free supporter to start with and we gain extra combat casting points which is amazing and this thing here is recorded on hard difficulty because i i didn't have the stomach for brutal because it just turns everything into a slog fest it is sometimes fun but i really don't like how much uh, you need to just clear out hostile um infestation bank gameplay anyways so we're following the Stormcrow totem animal thing, which gives us mana for grassland provinces. I figured a high mana pool will be really good for sustaining our undead hordes, and therefore I picked that up. As a really nice spicy ca caveat, that leads to our troops spitting out AoE lightning damage when they have the Stormcrow's boon, which sounds to me really amazing. We can also summon Krauss as ranged attack backup, which is, well, I think the least impressive of these creatures, but what can I do? We're going to go with it and see what we can do. I went for Wizard King here because here again, double casting is so insanely good as we can summon a lot. And well, we'll see about the rest while we play. So let's send our Explorer exploring and since we start out with a decent army blob, I mean a supporter, a shield, and two archers, what's uh, what's not to like about that? We even were lucky and got ourselves a skeleton archer. Nice. Okay. So let's get to that cage and help ourselves to another troop. But first, configure the production of Sprite Tree. So, well... It'll take three turns for our city to develop another citizen, so I'm going to bite the bullet and build the woodcarver's workshop unboosted as much as I despise to, but whatever. So I'm going to train a second spirit tracker as I think our main army blob will be totally okay since there is even a caged unit standing there waiting for us. Research. So, Skeleton Reanimation, Necrotic Magic, and Necromancers. This is a real tough one. I mean, Necromancers will be interesting summoners, but I think they will be overshadowed by our Animists. We won't be needing them that badly. Although the boost for Undead units is quite nice. I don't know. I don't see me using these too much, in all honesty. So... We will start out with the Skeleton Reanimation. I don't want to shuffle my research with that little bit of mana I got now. So, let's get the party started. So, we're not going to field the Archer, or, or do we? Why not field the Scout as well? I mean, there's really no harm in that, I think. It's just another uh, ranged unit at my disposal, isn't it? Okay. So, the special mechanic of the Primal Faction is that whenever they do something, they gain a stack of Rising Fury. When these hit five, these five stacks transform into five stacks of this uh, buff, which then will be used up with the subsequent attacks. So, it's an ebb and flow of a sort of thing. Is that a Lucky Clover? Yes. So, we definitely will stand there. My main hero also feels the orbs of necromancy because I felt like if I'm going necromancer mode, let's go big necromancer mode, right? Okay, so where will this thing go? It can't hit my entire um, backline, so we're going to step a little bit backwards and uh, let's see. Yeah, that's more like it. So let's do this. Let's wait a turn. 
should do the trick. Just gonna put the skeleton archers once we're more back. So I have a feeling about what will happen next. So I don't really want to spend any of my mana right now. We're just going to let them come. One ranged attack on my poor scout, and the elephant did exactly what I expected it to do. So our primal daughters have a low ranged uh, low range ranged attack. Oh, weird word. So they only have three, uh, three hexes of range, but they get a disengaging shot in return for a bad. So what that does, exactly that. This is, uh, yeah, it was a crit because we had overwhelmed tactics and the lucky clovers. I was hoping that this might happen. Okay, so my little guy here can now use his consume flora skill. Reaction heal, my man. Oh, good. I really love this. And now, mind you that even scouts get this Rising Fury thing, so this can be really, really powerful. So my hero can go for a ranged attack here, but I don't really want to. Let's see, I got my shields here in the flank. I'm going to get my skeleton archers two steps over there. And my shields can do the, can finish the job. Brilliant. So now let's step up and uh, thwack them in the face. There we go. Can I finish this off with the spell? Or that's the reason for me to spend some mana, as this will allow me to avoid damage on my troops whatsoever. This is really good. Hello, dear, dearie. What do we have here? A brewer ogre. I think these are remarkably useless. They have a frost side damage, but they can self buff and debuff themselves. And okay, one hex cone freeze AOE. I take everything back, I said. Might explode quite quickly, but might actually also freeze a couple of people while doing so. I really don't mind. So, ending my turn here in my home territory will heal up my troops entirely. Ooh, I'm getting quite the entourage. We even get a lesser stone spirit. I love these little guys. If I can't keep him alive, he'll transform into some real unit. Tier 3 stone spirits or tier 3 elementals in general are really good units. I really like them. So, we get to say hi to our spirit animal. So, well... Can I send my little stone spirit do that for me? Yes, I can. Beautiful. So, in a nutshell, this thing tells me that I need to build a temple so it will spread its home territory so we can spread grasslands via that. Ooh, it's even close enough for the stone spirit to come on in. Nice. So, necromancy overhaul. I want to talk a little bit about that. So, a lot of things have changed. We are currently researching a way to transform enemies into skeletons. So henceforth, whenever we're blowing up any enemies, we are going to get to spend souls to resurrect them. We're not going to get to resurrect beasties like these here, for example, never ever. But if we happen to kill any humanoids, we can create either archers, shields, or spears, or mages. So we really have a high variety of uh, undead troops now. And the only remaining um, fighter unit is the zombie. The zombie is now your only fighter troop in the, in the roster of the undead, which makes a lot of sense. Oh no, the corrupted soul is also a fighter. But from the baseline troops, that's where, where we went. So we are now going to see yeah, one step ahead there is pretty good. Let's munch some grass. That herbivore trait is really cool. Gives your troops a on-the-fly way of sustaining themselves without you having to put up too much of a of an extra trick with that. Really, really like that. So, for example, we can now put our shields in front of the skirmisher and heal them, and now do that. So, let's use the Overwhelm Tactics. 
upgrade a nice shield wall and call it a day. So yeah, as you see there, there's not much happening on that front anymore. Okay, the skeleton archers though don't get rising fury as they don't ha are they are no longer part of our troops. But we can we can fix that and we will fix that. This is also one of the reasons why I wanted to have necromancer of primals and try it out for reals. Blightbringer of cleaving. Now I don't know why it is a blightbringer. Ah, yeah, because it does poisonous damage. That's a really powerful thing. That is a really really good one. So my Poison orbs are only a tier 1 item. This is a tier 2 item. I didn't expect to frontline like Zoran, but why not? So we're going to go though first and learn Restore. As this is to me personally a must have on all of my heroes. I don't want to live without a, in a world without Restore on my heroes. Seriously. What's that? So. Let's try pick up that and the rest is Auto Explore. Okay, now then, we can next up, what will be the next building that I'm going to go for? Probably the shrine and the library, so forester, quarry, come to mind. Okay, let's start out with a forester, as this gives us both things, productivity and growth, and let's keep going. So, we have two neutral cities in our vicinity. Pretty decent. So, a brigand camp. After playing Brutal, I think the gap between hot and Brutal is really hot. It, it is really huge. It doesn't feel like there is... Uh, there, there, it would be nice if there would be something in between. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so... Stone Spirit getting close there. Okay. Well, we're definitely going to pick up that brigand camp right away. And I think I'm going to build just my first outpost. Hmm. I want to see what's behind this place here. I mean, it's only turn three. But usually uh, these camps mark quite decent spots for... Uh, or cities. So let's go for that. Yeah, just like I thought. Between these two cities, Fangholm and Safe Ward, is a pretty decent spot where we're going to build our first city. And probably our third city here on the coastline. Let's see about that. Okay, then. Let's keep going. Sprite Tree has trained up their second scout. So let's send that scout scouting. And I'd say I'd like to have a second shield. These are surprisingly good. So we can avoid that whole fight. Yeah, why not? Blessed Typhoon. Okay, nice. Another tier two right uh, melee unit and war growth for my hometown. That's pretty brilliant. So where can I put up a quarry where it doesn't compete with uh, here? I don't want to uh, put a quarry where I could put a mine. It's a simple logic. This hurts me. As mines are really, really powerful. Okay, little Marauder God. I mean, it's a joke of a fight, but I still want to uh, play it by hand. As currently, I know if I wouldn't, the AI would just blow up my poor little troops. I know it would. I have zero faith. So, let's see. Let's go, Gragas. He's wearing a, uh, a icy skin. Anyways. So, let's heal up our archers so they don't need to do that later. And let the enemy come. That's uh, always my preferred go-to strategy. The AI always plunges into into battle like that eventually. There we go. Rising Fury stacks incoming. So let's try that frigid belch thing. Um Oh, I didn't mean to right click there. Okay. I I I fumbled. I'm very sorry. That was not how I wanted it to go down. Whatever. So 
Yeah, let's try that. Oh no, I'm using a skeleton archer here. It's not one of my blowgunners. Whoopsie. So... Well... Let's take that thing and attack it. Put a shield on top of this. And I uh, go this way. I'll just let the skirmisher lin linger in my flank. It's okay. We're going to use raise undead now. And start clapping this thing here. There we go. So yeah, we 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 had to tank 20 damage on my skelly archers. But in all honesty, they are they are by far the most uh, expendable part of my troops. So I really don't mind. I obviously didn't uh, equip that big bad battle hammer. Oh no! So here, that's what I wanted to do. This is such a silly move, but it is powerful. As it is, uh, it, it feels as if it is a guaranteed hit. Not quite sure if it is, but it feels as if. As if. All right. At this part of the uh, game, it's all about dam uh, about uh, damage mitigation. You just want to take as little damage as possible. That's also why I'm now clapping up Necrotize. I don't want to suffer any extra damage on my troops. My little archers did uh, suffer more than enough. A wizard's bow. Hell yeah. This is a good one. This is a really good one. Tier 3. Hmm. Provoking Glaive. Ah oh, well. Taunt ain't bad either. So. I mean. This is by all means even way better so it was a strategic delay a wizard comes never to the right is never at the, uh, at the wrong time or something like that as mr tolkien said what he said jokes aside we are going to go now into a little bit more into this direction i don't i could build my outpost directly here at the doorstep of safe ward but uh, i don't want to this is not really effective this would really not uh, be where I want to sit eventually. Okay. So far, so good. I mean, I feel a little bit uh, like I could have settled down a little bit earlier. But by all means, it is really nice. We have a desecrated temple there. And I'd say, yes, yes, this oddly shaped province here, that's where I want to be. So, we ain't got nothing that we can learn Imperium-wise. What a tragedy. Or us. We cannot summon anything. In one turn, we can reanimate stuff. But, uh, yeah, here again, it has to be somewhat sentient life. Or uh, humanoids, I should rather say. So, yeah. Anyways, it is a real nice uh, early on clash so far. So now we can also use the uh, restoration effect here. There we go. So this is a little bit of a more um, dangerous situation for us. As the enemy fields a lot of high mobility and units. So let's see if we can get a good frigid belch in. Maybe I would fumble it like the last couple of times. Yeah, oh, I forgot about the uh, swipey attacks from the bears. Yeah, well, alright. So as you see here, fast units closing on in equally fast. So, if I would be able to move my shield units somewhere else, that would be really amazing. These guys should uh, change slots. Right now, his frigid belch would be really not hitting anything desirable. Therefore, we're going to focus down the, t the enemy tier 2 unit. This is what I want to do. I'm gonna delay the frigid belch. Ah, it wasn't the smartest move to um, let the uh, bear tank, let the uh, roar ogre tank the retaliation blow. Anyways. 
Let's heal the damage up. Well, let's see. We got a lesser stone spirit. We got the skelly archers. Well. Ooh. Double crit. Sexy. That means we can easily take down these uh, guys here. Nice. And, well, let's nibble on some wheat, take that blow, and summon something undead. There we go. Mm, good damage. All right. I don't know, somehow I always end up with an archer on my troops, so let's necrotize that thing. Ah, thank you, game. That's really appreciated, and I'm really appreciating that. So here's another cool thing. If you necrotize a unit, it does transform afterwards into a, into a zombie. The necromancy is full of little new tricks, which will be... I'll be showing these alongside of the series as good as I can, of course. There we go. That's been quite good. Level 3 for my hero, and another provoking glaive. Alright, I feel rather provoked by that. To not, uh, to not use it at all, and turn it into essence. That's what I'm provoked to by that. So, animal communion on a, on a hero is also really amazing. I should really consider that. So, is there anything we need from this tree right now? No, we don't. So let's take that. On a triple shot bow, this is a pretty, uh, pretty, pretty powerful thing. Okay, we got a quarry, we got a forester. What do we want to build? I could actually build already a clan lodge. Jeez, we're rich. Nice. So, access to tier two units is really, really powerful. And therefore, I'm taking my chances here. So, let's see. What do we need later down the road? Is there anything? Farms. More of them for the stone steely. More for the taverns. Yeah. So, we're going to farm it up. So let's take this one. So we can corner Fangholm a little bit in. Because I really don't like the prospect of... Uh, these guys just climbing my my territory while while they can okay so oh let's see i think i'm going to definitely expand here into this area with my heroes simply because the city over there will will take the territory there very soon and then i will not be able to seep in the xp for that anymore all right a little bit of a bit of an armor thing we remain concealed, of course. So, finally, we can now spend souls to reanimate skeletons. This allows us to really speedily uh, grow up our troops. But, oh, sheesh. This is really nasty. I want both of them, but we're going to take the Crow Primal Communion. I want my skeletal troops to have access to my primal skills ASAP. As this is such a huge power down, if you don't have this uh, capability, on your on your baseline troops oh so safe ward is uh, claiming that for itself whatever you guys do i don't want to wage war with my uh, neighbors before i'm not uh, ready to claim all your souls and process them properly that's just uh you know be a waste i want and i don't want that so here we have our first real battle of sword, as there is a five group stack. It's all tier one troops, so they'll explode quite quickly, but uh, they they do have quite a burst potential. It's not to underestimate there that these troops can hit us quite hard. Here goes the uh, plant eating skill. This is this is darn powerful. I mean, you can only use it once per battle, so. That's, uh, that's something necessary to say, but beyond that, I really feel like this, uh, this is such a powerful little, uh, sustain trick that I love, and speaking about little tricks that I love, burp, 
Whoa, triple freeze. That's what I uh, that that's what I had in mind the whole time. So here we can get a triple attack into these guys. Absolutely uh, desirable. I want to get rid of the you know, of these uh, little uh, wyvern fledglings in front of my hero as they are blocking him from his ranged attack. So we're going to use Necrotize. I love using Necrotize as a finish if, as a finisher where it feels like a, like a good move. And let's use that kick-ass bow. Oh, that's um, that, that's really powerful. Okay, decaying zombies can't uh, usually act the turn they got summoned, so that's a wee bit of a tragedy. But uh, well, okay, no friendly fire happened. I'm very very relieved. So I'm pounding the remaining. Mm units that are not immobilized as good as I can, as I feel like this is uh, the opportunity for us to to take over this battle like that. Okay, here it goes. And as you see here, most battles are over before we get the full um, boon power in, which is a bit of a shame, but... Uh, The full power of the primals, I always feel like, is uh, most of the time locked behind uh, triple banner battles like uh, other AI enemies. Okay, there we go. That's been a good one. Almost no losses whatsoever, HP wise even. That was good. I get it. So here you see, oh, we get to raise something. Excellent. So we can raise skeleton warriors and pole arms. And I immediately do. This is the powerful trick of our faction to just bolster up our ranks insanely fast. So, knowledge extraction. As much as I wanted to, I'm going to delay that because I want to go for the um, outpost construction there. City construction, I should rather say. Hello there, Mr. Rat Rat. Okay. So far, so good. I mean, it's a bit of a uh, letdown that I wasn't able to take both of the nodes, but whatever. I mean, technically, I think I could invade Safe Ward as well. But early on, I discovered that. With this faction, or with the necromancers in general, all these skeletons that you raise, you can super fast raise skeletons. Yes, nice and dandy. But you also have to pay quite a heavy mana upkeep for these. Therefore, yeah, it is, uh, it is a little bit of a, a double-edged sword. So this is uh, Fangholms, huh? All right. I think Fangholm is really... Uh, sitting on the wrong spot or we're going to assimilate fangholm that would be also the other option i think that's the way i'll take it so and safe ward will be now yeah, well we're going to put the war in safe ward let's put it like that so crow primal union uh, communion this is what we needed so let's put up soul collection so we get a steady income of souls and yeah this is what we need. This will put a heavy toll on our on our mana upkeep. This is one of the things that I figured that would be a little bit of a bad part about our build. As, yeah, this ain't ideal. I think uh, there, that is one thing where the uh, primals have a little bit of a problem. I was even considering picking up runesmiths just for this uh, issue alone. But then I figured I don't want to. So, yeah, 10 mana upkeep, because all of our undead carrying that enchantment with them. But on the other hand, that is an upgrade to, our, to all the riffraff that we're uh, carrying around with ourselves. A massive one. All right, let's go for a search spellcasting so we can save some mana. And let's keep conquering. I think this will be the last fight for today's episode. 
So the goal for the series is to illustrate the necromancy tree, not necessarily to win the entire game, because I personally feel like the the, the late stages of a Age of Empire, uh, Age of Empires, Age of Wonders game turn often into quite a slog fest. So I beg the forgiveness in that regard if I don't happen to finish this uh, matchup, but I do want to document in this series all the wonderful new tricks and uh, gadgets that the necromancy faction or the necromancy tree has now. I really, really like the fact that we have now a, a diverse roster on our necromancy troops. This is amazing. This feels terribly good. So, let's wait out another turn and let them come. Our troop stack is much larger than the last time, and the best part about it is now that we have clearly people that can get uh, lost and uh, don't won't be missed, you know. Unlike, uh, for example, the Lesser Stone Spirit, this guy I would really sincerely miss if it if he would go dead. That's the difference, as you see. So let's use our kick-ass bow. Wow, that thing is clapping hard. I really like it. Okay. So now we can use the Skeletal Warriors and uh, they have the Rising Fury trade. The Lesser Stone Spirit has the Rising Fury trade. Everybody has it now. And this is um, one really important uh, breakpoint in the power development of this uh, Primal Necromancy build, I think. Because without it, well, our our overall troop power would be really negligible. These undead, they are really good in receiving buffs, upgrades, or are really good to just, uh, well, get sacrificed, so to speak. But they are not good at uh, just... Uh, Pulling heavy weight all on themselves. That is just not their main quality. No, no. There we go. Eat some grass and feeling good. There we go. As you see here as well, the Primal Darter's damage is really not that high. We're going to upgrade it later with uh, some really nice uh, unit enchantments, but before that, you already noticed, there's not much oomph behind that. So... But it can be fixed, and we will fix it alongside of the series. So, thanks a lot, you all, for coming along with me. And I hope you will have a good time with me there. And leave me a comments down below. Thumbs up would be appreciated. Consider subscribing. And of course, check out the description box. There's plenty of cool links down there leading to my Discord, where you can have a chat with me or other like-minded gamers. There's my Twitch, where I do stream on the weekends and whenever I find time else. And, of course, there is also my Patreon, Paypal, or Buy Me A Coffee. So check them out if you'd be so kind. I'd be very, very happy. Also, there is a channel membership thing now on YouTube, which allows you to browse all the things that I have uploaded and pre-scheduled for release. So if you want to binge a bit, you just can join that for a minimal fee and you can check these out. I'd be very happy if you did. Either way, thanks a lot for watching this video up until the very end and I hope you had a good time. See you next time. Bye bye.